Let's talk about these Texas Longhorns as they are number three in the college football playoff and the country, of course. But CBS Sports uh, put out this piece earlier today, and it's about this playoff, but as well as the future. Three reasons why the number three Texas Longhorns are, quote unquote, back okay. to title winning ways. Larry, are you writing this down? And the Longhorns are just two victories away from their first nas- national championship since the 2005 season. Will this go down as the season in which number three Texas at long last announces itself as back atop the college football We're back. world? And look, part of this is mainly due in part to me, and I'm taking sole responsibility for this. Managing expectations hasn't mm-hmm. uh, been easy for the Longhorns since they last competed for a national championship back in 2009. They've repeatedly fallen short, and I have repeatedly made fun of this <laughs> uh, this program as you know a purebred TCU fan. And look, ever since Steve Sarkeesian came into town and started getting things right, the recruiting classes, they dumped a bunch of money into the facilities down there. It's they got a beautiful the biggest, place to they play. They got the biggest bank down there in athletics and sports. They in absolutely sports. do. And it's kind of hard for me to hate them because The Undertaker is a massive Texas fan as well, <laughs> presenting them, uh, presenting Quinn Ewers specifically with I that championship I actually like Matthew belt. McConaughey. He's the biggest Texas fan. Yeah. So there's a few reasons that make it really hard to hate the team. Mm -hmm. And this season, it has been very hard to hate them because they're playing some really good football. And I'm actually very happy that they made the playoff because I thought they were easily one of the four best teams in all of college football. But here is a rundown of why Texas is poised to win it all from CBS Sports. Number one, a strong culture has repeatedly conquered adversity. Anybody who has followed Texas football closely or even from A little bit of a wider perspective, the past decade knows the narrative well. They kick off the year uh, amid a bunch of hype and high preseason rankings in the polls to only fall woefully short of a conference title contention, let alone alone the national uh, title contention, exactly like the Cowboys, by Mm -hmm. the season's end. And it was as recently as two years ago in Sarkeesian's Longhorns debut that Texas started 4-1 and before a rash of one-score losses and blown second-half leads that sunk the program to a uh, six-game losing season and a or a losing streak in a five-and-seven season. And the word culture has been a focal point in Sarkeesian's messaging all season, and so far, it's paid dividends. It really has. The never-say-die version of Texas, if that can show up against Washington and subsequently one of the two, Michigan or Alabama, which, hey, they beat them already. Uh, the Longhorns roster ranks among the most talented groups in the country, may be hard for anyone to beat. Already 1-0 against the Crimson Tide, and nobody else in the four-team field can claim a victory from the regular season against a CFP participant. As good teams do, Texas, thanks to complimentary football, keeps finding ways to win. So a bit of a culture shift here in this Mm -hmm. season. And really, for me, it started when Quinn Ewers underwent that self-transformation. He, he found get, the Lord. He gets rid of the mullet. abhorrent mullet. It was terrible. I don't mm-hmm. care what anyone says. I'm sorry. The mullet was the dumbest thing to happen to him. Did you hear about why he had the mullet? Why he had it? Don't know. Choppy and I went to um, to lunch. Uh, it was a Tolo dinner or something. And it was somebody at South Lake was saying that he got a, an endorsement, an NIL deal when he went to Ohio State to have that mullet, just like Sunshine has the mullet, or not the mullet, that long hair. He yeah, the the flow yeah. it was like uh quinn Ewers. they gave him like big money up there at ohio state to have that hair that's not shocking it's really not whenever you have something that sticks out you know it's easy to mark it off of but mm-hmm. but that was the nil yeah whenever he shaved that off and then he went into detail about this off season you know getting a little bit more religious mm-hmm. and strong in his faith and he became a lot more vocal of a leader of that group of guys too and you even saw it, the, the night and day difference whenever he went down and coming back. It just seemed like, you know, you did get some good backup quarterback play out of Texas, but it seemed like you got a more motivated group as soon as he came back. It seemed like everyone was like, yeah, we got our captain back. Let's mm-hmm. go win some games. And, you know, some other tough losses and some injuries like Xavier Worthy, you know, him up and down with a couple of ankle injuries and whatnot. It's been tough, but with Quinn Ewers, it seems like that team is always confident. Yeah, I, I think so. And again, this this not like he feels this pressure from Arch Manning either because the Manning family was like, no, we want him to develop. We brought him. The Manning family 
chose UT because of Sark. They thought he'd be the best one to teach Arch Manning to play some quarterback. And they're not talking about a one and done. And the whole, the way this thing is playing out is, is, is Quinn Ewer's team. And that's why the backup just went to portal. Number two. To Duke. Number two on this list. Duke was an interesting choice, by the mm -hmm. way. Um, number two on this list of three reasons why Texas may be back to its title winning ways. Its offense has been firing on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the whole all gas, no brakes saying is coming to life. A lot of these things that Sarkeesian has been putting into the world vocally are starting to translate this season. And college football or really any sport can often come down to getting hot at the right time. And Texas absolutely fits that description. Entering its biggest stage since Colt McCoy was still quarterback one. Uh, the Longhorns head to New Orleans having won three straight games by double digits, including a 57-7 demolition of Texas Tech in Week 13 and a 49-21 route of a 10-win OK State squad in the Big 12 championship game in which the offense absolutely, absolutely stole the show both times the wins over the red raiders and the cowboys all but embodied the whole mantra that sarkeesian brought with him to texas back in 2021 after a championship caliber stint as the offensive coordinator at alabama and the former was the largest margin of victory for of the season for the longhorns and the latter saw ewers pass for a career high 452 yards en route to being named big 12 championship game mvp the so, last one for Texas as they take their talents to the Southeast Coast. And Texas's 106 total points in those two victories were the most by the team in a two-game stretch in 2023 and more than the Longhorns had scored in their previous three games combined at 88 points total. Okay, I love that. I know Larry loves it too, but I will say this. It's not like they've been playing every week since then. They have That's not true. played in a month. I'm just saying. Sometimes teams that are hot, they get during the spring. I remember Ohio State way, way back in the day thought they were going to win the national championship, and they hadn't played in a month since Thanksgiving. I'm going to be really, lost it. I'm going to be really in intrigued whenever they do move to the 12 team playoff format to start looking at some of the numbers, yeah. maybe like five years into it, mm -hmm. to see what that layoff does. Right. You know, for the higher seeded teams to see if they do, if, if we start they getting lose. more upsets. Uh -huh. You know, with the, the team lower that's seed. hot that keeps rolling, the yeah. lower seeds that are rolling from the end of their regular season all the way through the playoffs. I, yeah. I follow you because I feel like Texas, for a lot of people, is the safest bet just passing the eye test right now mm -hmm. to get this first round victory and maybe even win it all this year just because of the recency of how good we have seen them play in the past two games. But like you said, it's been a while ago. since a, they played month, those two man. games. And maybe there's a team that's just more mentally ready mm -hmm. that steps up and that's just like, yeah, we know who we are. We know what we're going to do. This maybe, is what we do. Yeah, maybe a Michigan goes out there and their defense just completely annihilates. I don't know. Here's just a wild. That that team you just mentioned, that would be Georgia. And they're sitting at home. Or basically, they're taking on Florida State. Exactly. They shouldn't have lost to Alabama. They shouldn't have an Alabama. But that's, that would be the team. That would be the team I would say, oh, well, they, can have, they know who they are. I hope we get the Texas Alabama rematch in the Natty. Oh, there's a lot of I know some Alabama people, and I can't stand them because I don't like Alabama, <laughs> and they want Texas so bad to avenge that loss they can't see straight. And the third and final reason why Texas may be back to its title winning ways, geography is playing into Texas's favor. Oh, here we go. We're talking about Shreveport, and we're talking about Houston. I already know. Not Shreveport, uh, New Orleans and Houston. There aren't any college football playoff games being contested in Austin, but the Longhorns have everything working in their favor when it comes to creating a home field advantage mm -hmm. this postseason. The trek from Austin to New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl is a mere fraction of the distance that Washington and much of its fan base are making from Seattle, 459 miles compared to 2,100 miles. Uh, so Texas can expect the crowd to lean heavily in its favor in that one, and if they advance to the national championship game, as you mentioned, in Houston, that would be nothing short of a de facto home game. Yes, because Michigan or Alabama, they got to go several hundred or thousand miles. So lots of things playing in favor of Texas uh -huh. on paper. Let's see if they can put it all into real life from the 469. Am I the only one thinking Washington will wash Texas by 14? Look, man, if I am drinking the Texas Kool-Aid for the first time in my life and they go out there and get washed by 14, I'm going to be very upset. 
I hear what you're saying. Let's hear from Larry because Larry, you're the UT grad. You and Lucius represent the Longhorns. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen against uh, Washington? The the thing that worries me the most is that we've got just a very young and experienced secondary, and this Washington team can put up points. But Quinn has just been on fire. This team has rallied behind him. You know, the, the the Georgia transfer Adonai Mitchell and mm -hmm. Xavier Worthy and 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 Sanders the tight end. I oh, mean they just is amazing. Oh, they've just yeah. been lights out. And Beast. so it, it, I just have a hard time thinking that it, it's. If Texas loses, I could see it being a really high-scoring game and they lose, you know, by a score or whatnot. I just don't see them getting waxed by Washington. I like your running back depth as well. Yeah, yeah. They, Tashar Choice, former Cowboy down mm -hmm. there, I mean, they've done a getting really done. good job recruiting the running backs over the last several years, you know, from getting, you know, B.J. Uh, uh, John Robinson. Robinson a few years ago, Baxter, and, I mean, Brooks now, it's just been – I mean, they, they've done a really good job recruiting because there, after uh, Mac Brown left, mm -hmm. those were the years I was there from 13 to 2016, the Charlie Strong years. Mm -hmm. Recruiting was rough. And <laughs> yeah, so, Charlie wasn't from Texas, so he didn't know the high school coaches like the rest of the guys. Yeah, and then Tom Herman, it was just, uh, he just couldn't, was not, he, he was getting some pretty high recruits, but he was just not, they were, he was not developing players. And mm -hmm. you could see by the number of players that weren't going to the NFL. Players just decided, you know what? I'll go to South Carolina. I'll go somewhere else, yeah. and they're going to develop me, take me to the NFL. Uh -huh. I don't need to go to Texas. And so Texas suffered because of that. The 9-4-0 is a big CA fan. They will lose. OU is better. <laughs> 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 uh, Had to get that one in there. But you, there's know. some insight Four. from a true mm -hmm. blood longhorn, Larry Flores. And look, uh, I know that that game is going to be fireworks nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Michael Penix oh, going yeah. against... Quinn Ewers and Texas in the end I'm going to go ahead and say that Texas wins I think that they're going to win by seven points one score like Larry said I think it's going to be high scoring but I think it's going to work in Texas's favor it might honestly be a whoever has the ball last kind right. of game I could totally see that happening two really good offenses but I think Texas makes the right plays at the right time I wouldn't mind them winning the whole damn thing and yep. I went to OU I think their fans are insufferable outside of Larry the T-Sips but I think that I wouldn't mind them winning it all either. So that's, I, happen to, I happen to like Sark. Yeah, I really like Steve Sarkeesian. I really mm -hmm. love the hire, and I hated that they got him of all people whenever he was hired a couple years ago.